Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to connect to an external ActiveMQ instance from a Spring Boot application. So in the previous video, we saw how to create an in-memory ActiveMQ inside a Spring Boot application. So in this particular video, we are going to see how to connect to an external ActiveMQ instance from a Spring Boot application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the Spring Boot application from the Spring Initializer, start at Spring.io. So I already had a, created a Spring Boot application when, uh, in the previous video with the name in-memory ActiveMQ example. So I'm going to just change that into a standalone ActiveMQ example. But the dependencies are going to be the same. So I have added the Spring MVC dependency, which is a Spring Web, and I am adding the ActiveMQ dependency here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this project. Okay, I'll just say save. So I'm going to unzip it so that we can open it. Okay, it is unzipped. Let me open IntelliJ. So I'm going to say open. So it's going to be standalone ActiveMQ example, right? So let it open. So let's go to the POM. I'll just uh, see what is there in the POM. So the POM has only two dependencies, the ActiveMQ, Spring Boot Starter ActiveMQ. The other one is the web. That's it. This is just the test one. Okay, that's all we need. So what we are going to do is we are going to connect to an external ActiveMQ instance from this particular Spring Boot um, project. Okay. So what I have done is I have already downloaded the ActiveMQ from the ActiveMQ website. So it is just a zip. I have the zip there. I have unzipped the zip in my uh, command prompt. So I have the command prompt here. So I have that unzipped here. So if you see here, this is the uh, path where I have the uh, ActiveMQ instance. So I have it unzipped here. Okay, the version of ActiveMQ which I'm using is 5.13.0. Okay, this is going to be the ActiveMQ server. Right, so let's go to the application and uh, let's create uh, something similar which we did in the previous video. So I'm going to create a Spring Boot application with some REST endpoint. So I'm going to say producer. I'm going to create a producer REST endpoint with which we are going to publish some messages. Okay, producer resource. So this is going to be a Spring MVC. So I'm going to use REST controller. I'm going to say request mapping, and I'll just say REST slash publish slash right. And I need to publish some messages, right? So I'll just uh, publish some string for now. Okay, I'm just going to say message, right? So I need some response. So I'll just say string as a response. So I'm going to mark this as publish. Uh, this is going to be a path variable, so I'll say path variable, I'll say message. I'm going to use this as a string, so I'm going to say final string message. Okay, we have the uh, message now. So this message is now going to be pushed into the uh, EMS topic. Basically, the um, the JMS topic which we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a package called config so that we can configure the ActiveMQ. So since this is going to be a standalone ActiveMQ, we need to configure some stuff. We need to configure the ActiveMQ connection factory. So let's configure this as a configuration project so that Spring Boot can auto wire these when it boots up. All right. So I'm going to say bean. I need a queue. So I need a queue with the uh, ActiveMQ implementation. So I'm going to say new ActiveMQ. Right. Return. So I need a new ActiveMQ queue, right? And the name which I'm going to give here is uh, standalone dot queue. Okay. I'm going to create it as standalone.q. This is what we need. The next one is the ActiveMQ connection. So we need a public. We need to inject the ActiveMQ connection factory. So I'm going to say ActiveMQ connection factory. Okay. I need to create a new ActiveMQ connection factory. Basically, I'm going to say new ActiveMQ connection factory. Right. And from this factory, I need to uh, register my URL, right? So I'm going to say dot set broker URL. So I'm going to do the 
URL of the ActiveMQ server. So I'm going to set the URL of the ActiveMQ server. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, inject this at runtime. So what I will do is I'll just uh, inject a variable add value. All right. So I'll just uh, get it from ActiveMQ dot broker if any URL. Okay. I'm going to say private string broker URL. Right and i'm going to use the broker url so this is just a variable which i'm injecting and then i'm uh, going to and i just need to return this guy right so we have created the active mq factory with the broker url so this particular active mq factory is now connect, going to connect to the active mq instance which is out there running in a different place so right now i will be running in the same local host but it might be running in a different port number so that is what we are going to do the next one is the um, jms template if you notice here um, we are going to use jms template so previously in the in-memory example we did not do anything because in uh, since it was an in-memory example spring boot automatically configured this jms template with the default connection factory uh, however once we created our own connection factory we need to inject that into the uh, jms template so that we can directly use the jms template to push messages to the same broker okay so that is why we need this particular step so i'm going to say active mq i'm going to say that use my jms template with this particular connection factory so this is going to create a new jms template with the connection factory which we created okay that is it so we have created the configuration let's go to the resource so which is pending here so i need to uh, inject the jms template here so i'll just say auto wire right so i'm going to say jms template then what do we need? We need the queue, right? So I'm going to say auto wire queue. We have created a queue, right? So I'm going to use the queue and I'm going to auto wire the JMS template. So JMS template, I'm going to use the JMS template to do a convert and send, like how we did in the previous video. While sending it, we need the queue and also the message. So that is what we are doing here. So we have the queue and we have the message and I'm going to return the message saying published successfully. Okay. So that is it. Okay. This is going to now publish the message. So what we can do now is I'm not going to create a consumer. I'm going to show you how we can publish the message and the message. Uh, let's see the message staying in the particular EMS queue. Okay. So let's go ahead and create the configuration properties for the ActiveMQ server and then we'll start. So this is the property which I have created. So I'm uh, disabling the in-memory ActiveMQ and I'm giving the broker URL. So I'm going to give the broker URL as localhost 61616. This is the default uh, uh, port for the TCP for the ActiveMQ. And now let's go and start the ActiveMQ. So I have the ActiveMQ here. So I'm going to say dot slash ActiveMQ and I'm going to say start so this is going to start the ActiveMQ instance in my machine okay this is going to create an ActiveMQ uh, instance and we are going to access that using an admin portal so let's go ahead and access that admin portal so this is the admin portal okay we see here the admin portal has not come up yet you can access the admin portal from this port 8161 slash admin so if you see here the portal has come up and there are no active connections in the particular um, ActiveMQ server if you go to the subscribers there are no subscribers as well if i click on the topics there is only one topic okay which is called the master broker okay we don't have any topics as well so we are going to create a topic called standalone.mq um, right so we have created that here where is that in the config we have created the standalone.q right this is what is going to get created let's start the process and then see it created okay when i start this this is going to create the producer so it's going to auto wire stuff it is going to create a queue okay and when we hit the publish message this is going to connect to the queue and then publish a message okay that is what we are going to do now uh, we haven't written any consumer yet but we are going to see how it is publishing onto the standalone active MQ instance which we have started okay the process is up now right so I'll uh, go ahead and uh, push some message right 8081 we just uh, did a hey youtube right so i'll publish the same message so i'm going to trigger hey youtube it's saying me that uh, published successfully if i see the logs there are no exceptions 
and if I come to the topics here and let me refresh the topic right if I if you notice here there is a new topic which got created called active MQ advisory producer queue dot standalone dot queue so this is what we created we created the standalone dot queue right and it is a producer that is what it has identified and if you notice here the message is out there okay whatever we published it is out there right now we can go ahead and see the subscribers there are no subscribers right now right and if you go to the connections uh, we should not see any connection because we have already published the message and then it is done so once you do a convertence in it just publish connects publishes and then it is disconnected that's it so now we are going to write a consumer so that we can uh, see how the message is getting consumed so i'm going to say a listener i'm going to create a package called listener i'm going to create a consumer Uh, I'm going to annotate it this with a component so that it can bootstrap in the start. So when the Spring Boot application comes up, we need to have a listener which should connect to the uh, ActiveMQ instance and then listen, right? So I'm going to use the JMS listener annotation, which is going to listen to the um, listen to the queue which we are giving. So the destination what I'll do is I'll just say standalone dot queue. That is what we have uh, created, right? So I have done that here and we need to consume this message right so whatever message comes here we are going to consume that message right and i am going to say received message as message so this is going to consume the message which is there in the queue and it is just going to print a message for us okay that is it so this is the consumer so i don't need anything else i have already created the pub, uh, publisher and we saw that the web messages are getting published there to the topic now let's restart this particular process so that we have the consumer registered and also whenever we publish any message the consumer will now start consuming those messages okay and we can see that um, in the active mq instance as well so we can go and check if the queues are good okay so if you notice here i have uh, gone to the queues and the standalone queue has only one message currently pending right and there is one enqueue which is, which is what it says what is pending so let the process come up once it is come up it should consume so if you notice here it has already consumed the message received message hey youtube we did not publish any message however the standalone active mq instance already had one pending message there is no consumer okay if i refresh this guy it should show that there is one consumer if you know if you notice here the Pending messages has turned to zero because we consumed it right now, and the number of consumer is one. That is what has happened. So DQ also one. DQ is just a number of messages which got removed from the queue. So we have consumed the message. So I'll just consume. I'll just publish one more message. I'll just publish a view. I'll just publish a message called view. If you notice here, the message got consumed. And if I go to the admin console of the ActiveMQ and refresh it. I should be able to see that number of uh, consumers as one, but the message is DQ is two, right? Because that was the second message. Okay. And if I go to the subscriber section, I can see the subscriber, which is there. If we see here, there is a subscriber. And if I click on it, it shows the subscriber has subscribed to the standalone queue. Okay. Which is nothing but ours. That is what our subscriber is. If you see the name is showing us something. Okay. So if you go to the topics, it shows the standalone queue, whatever is there. And if I go to the queues here, it is going to give the queue name for the standalone dot queue which we created. Okay. If you if let's say there are some messages and you want to purge them, you can purge or so purge them and delete them. You can do that uh, from the active MQ uh, uh, instance. So this is just the standalone instance which I have right now running, which is there in the which is there here, right? This is the standalone instance which is just running. Okay. So this is how you can connect to a external instance from a Spring Boot application. So in a Spring Boot application, you can have uh, one application as a producer, another application as a consumer, so that both can connect to the same standalone queue. So if you uh, think that you need an example of a microservices pattern where a producer is publishing message and a consumer needs a consumer message, let me know. I can create a, a separate video where I can have two different microservices or maybe more where uh, we publish messages to the ActiveMQ instance and we can consume messages from the ActiveMQ instance. Okay, I can show that as a microservices design pattern. Okay, uh, so in general, this is how we access the uh, ActiveMQ standalone ActiveMQ from a Spring Boot application. 
so the project will be uploaded to github so you can check the github the link for the github uh, will be in the description below you can go and uh, check out the code you can use them and let me know if you face any issues as such okay i hope you like the video if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe meet you again in the next video thank you very much